What's up guys, Houndesh here, and today I wanted to jump in and round up everything that we know about Destiny 2 Shadowkeep and the content that we're going to be getting in Year 3. So we've had quite a bit of information and news about the DLC, but especially recently it has been quite fragmented, so in this video I wanted to round it all up in one place for any of you guys who want to get up to date. But first up, I have some neat new content for you guys to check out, and once again, I've had the chance to create some awesome Destiny 2 stories over on Amino. Amino is really cool because stories and content on the app is interest-based, with large, passionate communities, including for Destiny 2. So be sure to check out Amino linked in the description below. You can also search the app on the store, download it for free, and once you're there, search Houndish. You can find my profile, follow me on the app, and you'll be able to see my new Shadowkeep story. Following me on Amino really helps to support me as a content creator, plus you can keep posted with any updates. But you can also check out a bunch of other content on Amino, so be sure to check that out, linked in the description below. Now, let's break down everything we know about Shadowkeep. Firstly, how big is this content drop going to be? Well, in an interview, Luke Smith likened it to Rise of Iron, which gives us a rough concept of what the DLC drop might be like. But if you bear in mind the seasonal nature of content right now, Bungie tend to keep it pretty busy, and I would be surprised if it didn't end up feeling a little more grand on the whole compared to Rise of Iron. And as always, we can expect a kind of roadmap of content for that season. But moving on, the bigger annual drops for Destiny tend to bring more big innovations and changes to the game. In September, a big thing for general progression will be a rework to power leveling, or more strictly how we acquire power. In a PC Gamer interview, Luke Smith said that while they love the endgame element in Dreaming City, it isn't necessarily the most fun way to acquire power over the course of two years or so. And they did state that they want to change that, so we don't know all of these specifics, but certainly we can expect the leveling system in general to see a bit more of a shakeup in September. And it's also possible that we could see a certain amount of XP leveling required on the base character. We have seen that with some of the larger expansions in the past. But more of our in-game investment is going to be mixed up with Armor 2.0. And since the announcement, Bungie stated that Armor 2.0 will affect new pieces of gear in the game, with certain armor being reprised over time. And what this means is that not all armor in the game after September will have the new functionality, but at the same time, our current gear won't lose any bonuses or power from where it currently is. The brand new armor that we get in September will feature the 2.0 perk slots, which act like mods, and so, we'll be able to collect brand new mods which act as perks, and these can be slotted into our gear. We can essentially build our own god roll gear sets, and Bungie confirmed that we'll be able to earn and purchase the new mod perks from various sources, so in itself, it will be a brand new part of the endgame. The third big change, or introduction, will be the artifact slot. So, unlike the artifacts in Destiny 1, this is going to behave like a real kind of multi-purpose mini skill tree. And these will evolve season over season, and developers teased that the upper tier perks could be compared to equipping another exotic on your character. And Luke Smith confirmed that we'll see up to 30 bonuses on the artifact, and these bonuses will include things that can make it easier to earn glimmer or upgrades. Which, by the way, Bungie did say that they will be retuning certain things in the economy, and that of course could affect how useful or needed these kind of perks will be. However, ultimately, we will be able to unlock sandbox perks, so on the screen, obviously this is a work in progress, but a mod inside of the artifact looks like an armor set bonus. We can see that it's actually a gauntlet mod, but Luke Smith teased other things like the ability to apply a melting point style damage buff to an enemy using a void grenade. And this on top of what we can build in the armor sets themselves is going to really push Destiny into that new territory in customization and build potential as well. We shouldn't fail to mention finishing moves. These are kind of new melee attacks that we'll see in Shadowkeep. So for the Hunter, they showed us them kind of doing this spin with two knives. The Titan jumps up, aims his fist, and then boom, you get that massive melee attack. And then for the Warlock, they'll kind of hover in place for a second and charge up a super melee. So the animations themselves are pretty cool, but they're actually what Bungie are calling combat emotes. So the visual element is equipped separately to the perks. To get the bonuses, we'll have armor mods which grant different perks. So things like the ability to guarantee ammo on a kill. But to activate finishers, targets with low health will display an icon and there will be a cost of super energy as well as some vulnerability when you're in the animation itself. So it sounds pretty interesting. And of course, the big thing will be whether the perks are truly appealing, but hopefully Bungie has that covered. The final thing to note on the subject of gameplay changes is that the devs have teased sandbox changes such as adjustments to roaming supers. Obviously that's just one element, but it'll also be just one of the things that they're doing which will affect content like PvP. New locations. New real estate is something that we've really needed over the past year or so. Of course Forsaken in itself was fantastic, we got two locations. But now in September, the moon is coming back. 
It is, however, very different to how it was in D1, while apparently keeping most of the locations from the first game. In the newest press kit, we see many locations. The Fogoth Strike is coming back. We see most areas of the Temple of Crota, the Shrine of Oryx, but also we've spotted the Shadow Thief Strike, the first light PvP map from D1, which this time will be the focus of his story mission featuring Dominus Gaul as a nightmare. So that's pretty interesting, but we also see Crota's Chamber from the original Moon Raid. This is pretty crazy. I wonder why we'll be going back there. But these are only the spaces that we've seen in the past. The new sections of the moon appear to be pretty huge as well. The Hive Scarlet Fortress dominates much of the new real estate. And this is where we see what appears to be the kind of end game moon. Clearly, we've got a lot of secrets, giant crystals, hive totems, platforms and mechanisms. What we see here is a hive cryptoglyph, obviously something that we can interact with in the game, but we know what it is via the collector's edition, which actually comes with a physical model of one. Gonna be cool to see what that does in the game, but with what we're seeing on the moon, it would appear that Bungie are taking what they've done with the Dreadnought and Dreaming City and giving the moon very similar treatment. And this will give us loads of reasons to return there. In fact, Bungie teased that we will have some similar cyclical reasons to visit the space, kind of like what we saw with Queen's Court or even the lore from Invitations of the Nine. So safe to say, the moon is going to be a massive part of this expansion and is the first fully reprised location from D1, so it looks like Bungie are set to do it justice. One thing we know very little about is the background behind the theme of Season 8. So, of course, on stage at GuardianCon, Bungie announced that as part of the season of The Undying, which is the name of next season, Vex Invasions will begin taking place across multiple destinations. They didn't tell us why this is happening, or what exactly it entails, but Guardians will be called to respond to this threat, and you can experience this content if you own Season of Undying. It's curious because we know we're returning to the Black Garden for a new raid, and so it seems that there is some kind of Vex link to Shadowkeep, possibly even the Nightmares on the Moon, it's going to be very cool to find out more, and I'd love to hear your thoughts about it down below. Now, in terms of activities and some of the content which hasn't seen enough love over the past year in the annual pass, Bungie did state that strikes are on their list as a piece of content that needs improvement, and Luke Smith suggested that strikes will factor into progression more meaningfully as well. And while we don't know exactly how they will improve, he did tease the idea of a dungeon that turns into a strike. But then going back to our footage from before, we see Tanix in the original strike location, Fogoth in the OG boss room on the moon, and we don't know if these will 100% be strikes, but it is entirely likely. And on the subject of how strikes can be more valued to progression, even the artifacts, their perks, armor mods and all of that stuff, it could totally be part of the loop for strike content, especially given that Bungie have committed to deliver more strikes and real estate throughout the annual roadmap. Bungie have also committed to improving PvP, but they've said before they look at things like trials, they want to focus on playlist improvements, sandbox, and they are going to be introducing D1 maps into the mix. We've seen an updated Widow's Court, but also Twilight Gap, and we spot some interiors from the map right here. I guess another factor for Crucible on the whole will be how the new armor system and artifact mods could affect PvP, but otherwise, there will be some smaller improvements to Crucible initially, with a little more focus on delivering changes, new maps, and content for Strike and Crucible activities more regularly. On the subject of activities and stuff though, the full feature list for Shadowkeep does list new missions, quests, a new destination, and dungeon, as well as new weapons and gear to earn, an all new raid, the season pass for Season of the Undying, and more. Also good for story fans right there, they are listing new missions, so of course the last actual story missions or traditional story missions that we got were back in Forsaken. So we will be getting more of that stuff. Now, what do we know about weapons? Well, we don't really know an awful lot about any kind of systematic changes that we could see, but we have seen quite a few new rewards, so Initially, we do have some confirmed legendaries. According to folks at GuardianCon, developers said that Eris's weapon is indeed a legendary called Loud Lullaby. Obviously a very cool looking thing, but we do have others, like a fusion rifle and a machine gun that Bungie teased, and we'll be able to acquire these via activities on the moon. But we also get a much better look now of a new exotic machine gun via Aurum FX, who've built a real life version of the weapon, and this is powered by an alien insect-like creature, but it turns out this was actually shown in the Shadowkeep Vidoc as well. We know that the Monte Carlo is returning from Destiny 1, and it seems fairly likely that we'll probably see some other reprise gear too, but in the original Vidoc, they showed off the exotic hand cannon with a long-range scope, a heavy trace rifle which does high crit damage, and a heavy bow which has a knockback effect. So that's going to be pretty awesome, but that really is more or less all of the Shadowkeep info that we actually have right now. Obviously, as we get closer to the launch, we can expect Bungie to elaborate and reveal more about the gear, progression changes, some of the core content that we'll be getting, 
but also the road ahead. Bungie have committed to another full year of content releases, so we are headed up to season 11 of the game by summer of 2020. We'll get the Shadow Keep drop for season 8, and from there, three more seasons will roll out. Bungie haven't revealed what the content drops will be specifically yet, but in interviews, Scott Taylor suggested that Bungie wants the roadmap to continue to kind of flesh out. They've spoken about this kind of continued annual pass style model, but a more efficient version of it. They revealed that roughly each of the season content passes will cost $10, and of course you can buy them whenever you like individually, and you don't need to own any prior content in order to do that. That does link to New Light, but on top of this there is Cross Save, and Bungie will allow us to select one set of Guardians on a platform to become our mains on all platforms. That's pretty huge if you want to play on different consoles or PC, but also, if you're new to D2, New Light means that you can play the base version of the game for free. So even if you don't own Destiny 2 right now, you'll get access to all of the patrol zones, all exotic quests and missions from the base game Curse of Osiris and Warmind, and both of those are two of the Year 1 DLCs, all of the strikes, crucible maps, Gambit, the Leviathan Raid, the base campaign for D2, and seasonal updates, and so essentially anything as of and after Forsaken, that's the stuff that you'll still have to purchase, but you won't have to own any of it if you decide to randomly play Season 9 or 11. I will keep you posted right here on the channel as we get more details, all of the technical stuff regarding cross-save, but also all of the content, the news, and the hype as we get closer to Shadowkeep. Yeah, it's going to be a super exciting time and I think the expansion is really starting to shape up nicely. By next month we'll be looking at Gamescom happening, and while Bungie didn't do E3, they have had kind of their own reveal events and stuff, and I'd imagine they'll definitely be doing more of that, but possibly we could get an influx of gameplay and new details after or around Gamescom. But otherwise, thank you for watching the video today, guys. I hope it has been helpful. I'm pretty sure I got absolutely everything, or more or less everything, that we know right now. So if I missed anything, definitely let me know below. But if you've enjoyed it, a rating is very much appreciated. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit subscribe. If you like the look of Amino and you want to check out some of my stories I'm posting over there that we mentioned before, all of that is linked below and attached to the pinned comment. But if you're new around here, be sure to hit subscribe to see a lot more D2 content. And whatever you get up to, I hope you have an awesome day.